Hello all, and welcome to my first Sea of Thieves tutorial. I'm Bones McGee, and today we're going to be covering the basics of getting into the game for the first time. These tutorials are intended for new players, but experienced players can watch and enjoy them too. <laughs> anyway, let's get started. Upon booting up the game for the first time, you'll be greeted by the Infinite Pirate Generator, the game's pirate selection system. Rather than a detailed character creator, you can instead choose from a wide variety of randomly generated pirates. Once you've chosen your preferred pirate, you'll get greeted by the Maiden Voyage. It's the game's built-in tutorial, and it's pretty good, but it doesn't teach you everything you might want to know. That's where these tutorials will come in. Upon finishing the Maiden Voyage and entering the main menu again, you'll be greeted with three buttons. Adventure, to sail freely across the waves, Legend of Monkey Island to play the Legend of Monkey Island Tall Tales, and Maiden Voyage to replay the Maiden Voyage again in case you missed any commendations to unlock any free cosmetics it might provide. We're going to choose Adventure. And when you choose Adventure, you'll be granted with two experiences. High Seas, which is the full multiplayer experience where other players can meet you and battle you, or Safer Seas, a newer mode that's designed for newer players to introduce them to the game, where you play solo on a server by yourself. On Safer Seas, you cannot use Captaincy or Sail for a Guild, so you'll have to be on High Seas if you want to purchase ships or sail on a Guild with your friends. But we're going to charter a ship. There are three ship types in the game. The Sloop, Brigantine, and Galleon, and each is designed for a bigger crew size. For your first maiden voyage, I would recommend the Sloop, but it depends on how many people are going to be playing with you, what ship you're going to be sailing. So we'll sail the Sloop. Then you click confirm and assemble a crew, and this will create a crew ledger. Here you can invite your friends to the game. You can still invite them while you're in the game, but this is a good way to get them all in the game at once before you hop into the server. Once you've loaded in, you'll play a short animation where you're waking up in a tavern. Must have been a pretty rough night because you don't remember what happened last night, but that doesn't really matter now, does it? Once you wake up and exit the tavern, there's a lot of things to do, but I'll try and guide you through them as quickly as possible. There's, th there's a total of eight trading companies in the game that you're going to be working for, but the only three really matter at this point in the game. There's the gold hoarders, who send you after chests and golden trinkets to turn in and earn cash. There's the order souls, which sends you on skeleton bounties to hunt down bounty skulls. And there's the merchant alliance. There's plenty of other services on the outpost too, like the ship right for customizing your ship, clothing, weapon, and equipment stores, and the Pirate Emporium, the game's premium currency shop. Once you go out to the dock, you'll see that your ship is parked there waiting for you. You can leave now, or if you own any cosmetics, choose to equip them at the ship customization chest. I'm gonna throw on a few random ones just for fun. Once you're ready to set sail from the outpost, there's a couple of things you need to know about your ship before you're ready to go. There's a couple of controls that'll help you sail your ship. There's the wheel, capstan to raise the anchor, cannons to fight off enemy crews, harpoons to grab loot and other things out of the ocean, the map table to help you find your way, the quest table to vote on voyages, the hourglass to do battle for the Sea of Thieves, the wood barrel for getting wood to repair your ship should it ever take a hole, food barrels that contain food that heals you, and cannonball barrels which hold ammo for your cannons. Once you're ready to set sail and bring yourself that horizon, the first step to get out of port is to raise your anchor. Just press F on the capstan and press forward and you'll raise your anchor. The larger ships take longer to raise their anchor, with the sloop taking the shortest amount of time and the galleon taking the longest. Up next, you'll want to grab your sail length and simply drop it. And away your ship goes. Now you can grab the wheel to steer your ship in any direction you like. There's a compass next to the wheel that shows you your heading, which can help you in combination with the map in finding islands you need to go to for quests. While you're sailing out on the seas, you might notice gusts of wind above you. These gusts of wind can be used to give your ship a boost should you have wind in a direction your sails can catch. I shall give a proper demonstration on how to angle your sails to best catch wind. 
Just simply straighten out your wheel when you have wind and adjust your sail until they catch. It should play a music cue if you have music on, but for the sake of recording, I don't. When approaching an island you'd like to stop at, you might be inclined to drop your anchor. However, this can leave you vulnerable, as the anchor takes some time to get up. Rather than dropping your anchor, you're going to want to practice racing your sails to full. Simply grab your sail length while approaching the island. Hold up. This will raise the sails and slow down your ship. This way, the anchor isn't down and your ship is still stopped. And if any players are encroaching on you, you can quickly drop your sail and make a quick getaway. Do be prepared for a chase though. There are some small situations where the lowering the anchor might be a better option, such as if you're about to hit the island, or you're in a storm and you don't want the ship to move. Sea of Thieves has four different weapons you can choose and equip at any time using the armory. You can only have two equipped at a time though. Figure out which ones you like best, but the four weapons are the trusty cutlass, the all-rounder flintlock, the close-range blunderbuss, and the sniper eye of reach. Choose what you think is best for you and experiment to see what you best perform with. I best perform with cutlass pistol or cutlass blunderbuss, but I've been practicing with eye of reach. When equipping your weapons, you can only have two equipped at a time, so it's not possible to equip every weapon in the game. To equip which weapons you'd like to bound in your slots, simply click on the weapon, and you will have an option to swap your weapons for slot 1 or slot 2. I prefer my ranged weapons in slot 1 and my cutlass in slot 2, but it's up to you. When you fire a ranged weapon, you can see in the lower right that I have 5 counts of ammo. You can only hold about 5 counts of ammo on your person. However, you can always reload at the ammo chest on your ship. The ammo chest never runs out, so don't worry about it. An important thing to note is that all versions of the weapons you see in the game are cosmetic differences only, so every flintlock in the shop will perform exactly the same. Although some with the flintlock have different iron sights that can be helpful or a hindrance. I prefer the ebb and flintlock, but it's a little bit hard to get as you can only get it through twitch drops or other promotions. It has a very nice iron sight that hits its mark accurately. There are other similar pistols in the shop though, such as the mercenary or cultured aristocrat pistol. Once you find a piece of treasure you'd like to turn in, simply hold F to pick it up. This will put it in your inventory. There's multiple different types of treasure throughout the game that I can explain in a different video. But, there's two main types of treasure. There's large treasures and small treasures. Small treasures are also known as trinkets, and, while well, you can only hold one at a time, can be loaded in special treasure chests that can hold up to three at a time, which is helpful for hauling multiple at once. There's also larger crates, or chests, that can only be held once and cannot be put in any other chests. Once you find a piece of loot you like, simply put it within range of your harpoon, and be ready to harpoon it once you get back to your ship. Once you've harpooned your loot, you can put it anywhere. However, I prefer to put it directly up on the bowsprit. And this makes it easier to sell, both when you have captaincy to the sovereigns and just to, to trading companies in general. Cannonball crates and some other merchant treasures require you to fill the crate to full before you can sell them. This is simply done by filling it with whatever the crate holds, in this case cannonballs. I'm going to be taking some cannonballs out of my barrel to fill this one. Once you're within range of the outpost, you can simply hop off and head to the company representative to sell. Trading company representatives will only take loot associated with their trading company, so you cannot sell this decorative coffer to the Order of Souls or Merchant Alliance, and you cannot sell the cannonball crate I have to the Gold Hoarders or Order of Souls. They simply walk up, don't be shy, they don't bite, and sell the decorative coffer. It's important to note that Safer Seas has a reduction on gold earned as well as reputation earned. So, if you want to earn the maximum amount for your treasures, you're going to want to play on high seas. And that's the conclusion to today's tutorial. If you liked the video and found it helpful, be sure to leave a like or even subscribe. I'd greatly appreciate it.
and be sure to look out for more tutorials from me on more complex subjects such as cannons, PvP, and other trading companies and specifics. Thank you for watching.